In this demo, we are looking at two awesome new delay pedals from Boss and asking the question, which would you choose? Analog? <laughs> digital. In the red corner, the DM101 delay machine, boasting eight individual Bucket Brigade chips, 12 delay modes, modulation, MIDI, tap tempo, and mono or stereo out for the best of analog with modern connectivity. And in the blue corner, the SDE 3000D dual digital delay. Not one, but two faithful reproductions of the classic 1980s Roland SDE 3000. A hundred presets, you can run them in series or parallel, tap tempo, MIDI, delay times up to 3000 milliseconds, modulation, dual mono or stereo, and more. So let's check out some riffs. First up, we're gonna dive right in with the dual delay. So I've got the first delay set to 380 milliseconds. That sounds like this. The second one sounds like this. That's set to 507 milliseconds. And this is in the standard serial setting, okay? So they're gonna bounce into each other. So with them together, we have this. Another classic use of delay this time, analog delay, was uh, Mr. Brian May. And he'd use longer delays so that he could harmonize with himself. So check this out, you'd have... Like a call and answer thing, right? And then he'd go up the neck with... back to the 80s there was some tremendous use of digital delay by pioneers like Eddie Van Halen and then later Steve Vai and one of the desirable aspects of digital delay over analog delay is the pristine quality of the repeats okay you're going to get an exact replica and you could tweak you know the whether they're at unity gain or slightly quieter so for example Steve Vai's Hina has um, uh, one single delay at about 360 milliseconds <laughs> And he uses it to play against himself, basically, which is what a lot of players will do when they're using this for rhythmic stuff. It goes like this. I could go on. Such a great tune. Now, another useful thing with digital delay is the length of the repeats, right? So this is set to uh, a one bar repeat. With a few repeats, right? And um, Steve uses this in Hot Dog and a Shake. There's a little section of the solo where he uses whammy and bends and a slightly different phrasing and it creates this incredible sort of weavy psychedelic texture. And that goes a little something like this. Now we can't not talk about Eddie Van Halen when we're talking about digital delay, especially the SD3000, because um, that is a recreation of uh, a rack effect that he used. And in fact, Boss have an EVH model of this too. This is just set up for 400 milliseconds, one repeat for Cathedral. <laughs> So 
So he's basically set the repeat to be one beat after what he's playing, and then he plays eighth notes, so they sort of cascade into each other. <laughs> Etc. Right, but he also uses this. Um, I think he's got a non-linear uh, taper guitar volume, so he can quite easily do the uh, the volume swells. Right. <laughs> If we contrast that with some 90s bands like the Foo Fighters, Dave Grohl uh, was a real fan of the Boss DM2, that's an analogue delay, and the vintage setting on the DM101 is in fact a replication of that effect, but with uh, longer delay times. So with these settings we have Aurora which sounds like this. That's a bit like a warm hug with the notes kind of cascading into each other and you get a more of a wash of sound than you do with this more clinical digital delay. Another one that uses this with these settings. And that's the intro to Rope and it really is characterised by how the repeats become less and less discernible from the original, right? Add a little bit of gain to it as well. You can hear a little faint bit of like almost tape warble, can't you? And we could also add a bit of modulation to that to further enhance those repeats. Check these settings out. Now let's cover a little bit of um, modulation and uh, dotted eighths in both analog and digital. And a huge proponent of this is the um, Edge, the U2. You can't really talk about delay without mentioning some of these uh, some of these classic uses of it. So for this example, we're going to look at U2's Pride, and we're going to be using the digital delay. And we have the repeat set to 418 milliseconds. All that together, we have this. And then with the DM101, we have these settings. We're going for roughly one-ish sort of repeats. Note we've got on the top right-hand corner there, I've set it to dotted eighth note. So you get that. notes again are playing against each other. A bit of a theme, isn't it? So that riff goes like this. Next up, I want to have a quick look at slapback delay. Really, really short delay times. I mean, you can't even hear that, right? But you can use it for a bunch of stuff like fattening up guitar tones, or, I mean, it was used extensively in, you know, kind of surf music, Brian sets, so that sort of stuff. But for more modern uses of it, look no further than Pearl Jam's Even Flow, add some gain, add a bit of wah, and we're in Mike McCready territory. <laughs> Thing we can do is add a second delay to that for Mike's fills. A bit more gain, uh, and with a second delay set at about 660-ish, we have... <laughs> Which is just a lovely lead tone, isn't it?
Now, for analog stuff, we're going to look at them crooked vultures. They used, um, Josh Homme uses a space echo quite a lot. And we've got a multi head setting on this, which, as it sounds, you get to choose uh, from different tape heads to get various different uh, delay types going. I'm using this for a slapback delay. So, delay time and intensity right down. <laughs> with some gain you have this all that stuff add a bit of wah great tone another cool little variance between the two is when you're using long repeats some players like um, Dave Navarro will use several repeats in time with the with the song. Both of these units have tap tempo, which makes it easy for you to like dial it in. Um, this first one's at 330 and Unity is around about 40, I found. So for Warped, he'll be doing things like... <laughs> but then with War as well... You'll also hear the same technique in Coffee Shop, slightly quicker, it's uh, about 240 milliseconds. Now another example of that but using analogue is Queens of the Stone Age and The Fade, check this out. Every single repeat changes ever so slightly. And that's a really nice one because it almost feels like there's a bit of um, reverb like mixed in, which there isn't. That is just the um, dual mod setting. One of the, um, them Crooked Vultures uh, example, which I love, is Bandoliers. And if you use the ambient setting with a really low, uh, in fact, the delay time's at zero, you get a slap back, but with almost a bit of reverb too. couple more things to show you. I've set up the expression pedal with the DM101 and I'm in vintage mode. So you got that stuff going on, right? We're going to look at a bit of Radiohead. One of the cool things that Ed O'Brien does is, you know, play with all the knobs, but you can um, actually assign those to the foot switch. In fact, you can assign a minimum value for all of the knobs except the mode and a maximum value so that your heel and toe position can change, what, six knobs effectively, right? Really cool. I've just set one, so I'm just going to do intensity. So with it in heel position, it sounds like this. That. And if I push it forward, and then back off. You've got loads of control, so that was me just backing it. Whoa, easy there. So that was me just backing it off and ro rocking it forward. And you can create some really cool little soundscapes like Ed O'Brien does. So I really hope you've enjoyed this one. And last, but by no means least, we're going to be looking at a dual delay setup that was used for David Bowie's Less Dance. And Niles Rogers played on that. Um, he came up with the chords and some funky stuff, and then a producer actually came up with the delay settings on the track, right? So one is set to a quarter note. Here's delay one. And delay two is twice as fast. And now I'll place this really simple line. But 
with both delays engaged, we have this. So that's what I'm going to play you out with. See you soon. <laughs>